Well, would you look at that? It's late, and I'm the only person that's here at home right now. And that means only one thing. I can't get on anybody else's nerves, so I'd have to get on my own. I don't really want to do that, so I decided to power up the camera and see if I could get on all of you folks' nerves instead. <laughs> Hello there, everyone. UXW Bill here with you once again. We have recently been remodeling one of my brother's bedrooms. Look at this. We've done a lot of work in here. The room was already painted and stuff like that. But it was in dire need of a good cleaning and a little bit of freshening up. You know, change the bedding, flip the mattress over, do things like that. And so we went ahead and did those things between my mother and I. We made pretty short work of this in a couple of days. And that meant that something had to move out of his room, something that had been there for many years, and something that I have mentioned in times past. I have talked about in the past during various live streams and in comments on YouTube that there was a time when you could buy a product from Sony, such as the Handycam I'm recording this with right now, and you could know that that product would last a long time, it would be excellent value for money, it would work well, and of course, I repeat myself, it would last a very, very long time. Well, what you're looking at right now is this Sony television set. This is a Trinitron Color TV solid state. That means it's transistorized. Model number KV-1921 with the EconoQuick system. For those of you who are familiar with old TVs or televisions with picture tubes in general, most of them take a few moments to come up and display a picture when you turn them on. Well, back in the tube television days, and even to a certain extent some of the early solid-state or hybrid chassis television days, an instant startup was afforded by enabling the heater filaments in the CRT to stay lit any time the set was plugged into power. Unfortunately, this had the deleterious effect of wearing out the picture tube very quickly. And per the manual for this television, Sony's EconoQuick system, while it did not allow for instant startup, dispensed with the problem of wearing out the tube prematurely while still allowing for relatively quick startups. I don't know how they did that. I've never seen any service literature for this TV. This television was purchased brand new in the late 1970s by my father. I believe he was in college at the time, finishing up his college career. And he bought this TV then. We used this as our living room television for many, many years. And then we, when we moved into this house, this TV set, went into storage and didn't see a lot of use after that. It came out of storage and ended up in my brother's bedroom where he used it periodically to play video games. And most recently I did power it up, only to discover that while it does still generally work and play just fine, it has very dirty controls and insufficient picture width due to deflection related issues, probably aged capacitors that have shifted in characteristics over the years and should be replaced. But since I've talked about this TV briefly, and I've got a little bit of videotape left on this uh, Video 8 tape that I'm using right now in this Digital 8 camcorder, I thought I would do a quick video about this television just so you could see it, because I know that there are some of you who like this sort of thing. It has a knob style tuner with both VHF and UHF tuning dials, separate of course. They would not be combined on most televisions until later. And unfortunately, the only issue this television has really suffered, as you can see right away, is the glue holding the metal trim on some of the doors has fallen off. For example, this one's taped back on, the speaker grill was taped back on, still is, but the tape has largely degraded over the years. And unfortunately, the glue that held the metal on over the picture control door failed quite a long time ago, and it fell off. It's been lost to the sands of history. Here at the bottom of this television, you can see a fairly unique feature. There are two earphone jacks. One of them allows for you to listen to the set while the internal speaker remains active. The other one mutes the internal speaker. And something you certainly wouldn't see done today, Sony actually included the earphones with this television. Now they're just monophonic, of course. If you plug a stereo headset into either one, it will only play on one speaker, typically the left speaker. The only other problem this television has had, you might have noticed that there's a control with a red dot in the middle of it here. This is the automatic picture control. This controls the color level, the brightness, things like that. Some televisions use sophisticated means 
to adjust the picture automatically. Zenith used a photo cell during some of the 1980s on their System 3 sets. I don't think this TV does anything so fancy. But as what may be yet another result of components that have shifted in value, well, attempts to turn that on result in a severely oversaturated picture and have done so for as long as I could remember. We'll go ahead and take a look at the back of the set here. It's in pretty good shape. It could use a cleaning. Got a little bit of damage to the woodwork here, but nothing that probably couldn't be fixed by someone who was skilled with veneer. Here are the original Sony antennas that came with the set. Still in very good condition. Not bent at all. Well, maybe a little, but certainly not enough to matter. There's the other one right there. Take a look at that. Try not to bend it when I put it down. Go ahead and put those down for storage. And where televisions today typically hook up to the antenna with just one connector, well, this television comes from a different era when the UHF and VHF antennas were separated. Sometimes the VHF would come in over 75 ohm coax, but the UHF came in over 300 ohm twin lead. And in order to address this problem when using more modern antenna systems with this TV, where everything came in over 75 ohm coax, you need a signal splitter such as the one on the back of this set. Got a couple of picture adjustments here, probably the color drives I believe, and then the information plate for this television, which I will try to show you. Of course this television was manufactured in Japan, it was made in October of 1977. So one of these days I will get around to giving this television the attention it deserves and giving it a new lease on life. But in the meantime, I'm out of videotape. I've gotten on your nerves satisfactorily. I thank you for watching and encourage you to leave a comment if you have one. <laughs> oh man, what the heck happened to my windshield wiper?